All right. In this um, little video, I'm going to explain gestational diabetes. So we talked already about type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So in, in terms of diabetes mellitus, what's going on is we really are looking at a decrease in insulin's ability to do its job, which is to store. Okay, so in gestational diabetes, this is happening as well, but it typically is happening during pregnancy. So some women would develop gestational diabetes when they're pregnant. This is important to, information to know because um, this happens to about 2 to 10% of pregnancies. And after that pregnancy, and the woman does have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes and, and within the 10 to 20 years, the risk is a lot higher. It is not really the pregnancy that made them become diabetic per se. What the gestational diabetes is pointing out is that there was something going on in the woman's body and, and what is revealing. So let's go through what that means. So one, as the woman is pregnant, so, uh, you know, we like to think that pregnancy is this joyful um wonderful experience, which it is because you are making a human being. On the, hum on the female body, pregnancy is quite hard on the human body because you're trying to grow a baby, right, inside you. And that baby uh, needs to grow, but you also have to maintain your health for labor and delivery and then for nourishing the baby. So there's this kind of push and pull between the baby and the mom. So this is what happened. So pregnancy is a stressful time for the body because you're growing this um, being that's not really like part of your body, but it is made by you, right? So it's a little bit confusing, okay? Um, I like to joke that pregnancy is you're growing a parasite, basically that's sucking nutrients and blood from you, Um while it's growing bigger and bigger and our body lets that happen. But so that's what's going on is that the pregnancy is going to increase the stress hormones. Okay. So those stress hormones are cortisol, but there's also pregnancy hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So these hormones get, get become really high during pregnancy, especially later in pregnancy. Okay. So this, these hormones right here, these three hormones is what becomes the resistance factor, okay, like we talked about in type two. So these little axes. So the pancreas is still making that insulin, right? There's nothing wrong with the beta cell and the insulin, right, into the body. But then you have this more resistance factor on the mom cell. So the resistance factor comes to the mo mom's muscle and liver cells and blocks it. So as it blocks that, the mom cell becomes insulin re resistant and decreased glucose uptake. So the glucose is, uptake is decreased. This is actually quite normal for pregnancies. It's called the glucose sparing effect of pregnancy. What it's doing is, is that it's really telling the mom, the hormones are telling the mom, don't take all the glucose because we need some for the baby to get bigger and fatter, especially in the last month of pregnancy. Okay, so the baby gets extra glucose. If there's a good balance, then the mom gets enough and the baby gets enough. However, when there is too much resistance factor, saying there's more cortisol, more progesterone, and don't forget, as the mom is also um, in the last few months of pregnancy, she's also gaining more weight, um, which can cause more resistance factor as well, depending on the mom's maternal starting weight. So the mom is going to have more resistance factor, okay? And, and as it makes more, the baby should be getting more glucose. But if the mom, so the patient's mom, has borderline low or pancreatic function, so meaning the pancreas is not as robust, right, as an average pancreas then this is going to point out a problem because they're not making enough insulin to, to fight with that resistance factor. So the insulin is lower than normal, right? Prior to pregnancy, she wouldn't have any problem because it was enough insulin for herself. But the pregnancy kind of tested the fact that her pancreas is not as robust. So it's pointing out that she might have an, like a less robust pancreas. 
So then she has lower insulin than, than another av average pregnancy. So that in turn causes less glucose uptake by the mom. So the mom's not taking as much glucose. So extra glucose is going to the baby and the baby actually gets bigger. So the baby will get really a big baby, like a 10 pound, 11 pound baby is actually probably taking too much glucose and it could be one of the symptoms of gestational diabetes. Okay, so this is why after labor and delivery, it's just pointing out that the fact that the mom with her low pancreatic function is much more prone to developing diabetes, especially as she ages, okay? Not every pregnancy will result in gestational diabetes, again, depending on the pancreatic function, but also depending on how much stress hormone or pregnancy hormone is being produced um, during the pregnancy. If your mom had gestational diabetes, you have a higher chance of getting gestational diabetes. And also if your family members have had gestational diabetes, you also have a higher chance. Um, groups of certain ethnicity also have a higher risk of diabetes. And this includes some Asian populations, uh, African American and Hispanic populations have a higher risk. So if you're told when you do that blood glucose test uh, during pregnancy, he told that you have gestational diabetes. Meal planning is really important. You want to make sure that you're giving meal that doesn't increase your blood glucose too quickly, but have a steady level of blood glucose. And also by exercising, you're making sure the mom is demanding more glucose, so less is going to the baby. And um, if the, if this does not work, medication and insulin can be prescribed for the mom to make sure that that is balanced and. And in doing lab labor and delivery, the baby's blood glucose needs to be monitored because she's getting, she or he is getting extra glucose. So that is um, become something that should be uh, looked at. Okay, so that's gestational diabetes. You want to take a few moments to apply your knowledge to diabetes to the first five slides of this lesson um, and practice the three types of diabetes we talked about, which includes type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes really is a form of type 2 diabetes, and just that the resistance factor is not hormones of pregnancy and stress hormones.